it's Jason Stahl, and this is the very first episode of Under the Radar, a new podcast that we are launching that's going to focus on vehicle electronics, vehicle technology, ADOS, and all the above. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Chris Gutierrez, who is the Vice President of Technology and Innovation for ProTech Automotive Solutions. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. So, Chris, let's talk about ADOS, Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. It's not like they came out yesterday, right? Uh, lane Keep Assist, Pedestrian Alert, uh, Adaptive Cruise Control, all those things. Um, they've been around for a while, but I wanted you to give me your assessment as we stand today. Are collision repairs ready for this technology as far as addressing it in the repair? Um, are they still learning? Um, are they are they clueless at this point? Well, what is your opinion of the state of where collision repairs stand in, in, in addressing these complex vehicles and ADAS systems? I, I think clueless would be a little, little harsh, I'm not gonna lie, um, but there is definitely a learning curve. So we were um, kind of, I don't wanna say blindsided by it. Uh, we were a little, I think the industry is a little naive to it, right? Hear no evil, see no evil kind of deal. And it was one of those things where the, it's not just the collision industry as much as it is the consumer industry, right? The, the, the consumer itself. So you bought these, we bought these vehicles with these new systems and they were just, they were almost add-ons at the time. And as a consumer, if I didn't understand how it worked, then I couldn't transfer that, that level of concern to the repair. So when you get into a car accident, you're, you're, is the car going to look the same? Is, you know, my insurance going to go up? There's, there's these questions that are asked and no one asked, hey, is my, is my backup camera still going to line up when I back up? Like that was, that wasn't a concern because there wasn't, it wasn't in the previ of, of even the consumer. So I can tell you, looking at it from, from the collision industry, I completely understand where it went kind of under the radar, right? Well, under the radar. So, Very good. Um, right? <laughs> so shout out, shout out. Um, I can see it. And it was, people were, I don't want, uh, so I've been, I've been teching most of my, most of my adult life here. And when I would show up to a center to do diagnostic work, to figure out problems on cars, it was concerns. Hey, my window, you used to be able to push it one time and the window goes all the way up. Now it doesn't do it. Um, uh, my kids would be able to get in the car and I could push a button, the door would close. Like those, those, the functionalities that people got used to, they were, they didn't realize that the little yellow light on the side actually was at a measurement. They were just used to seeing something. So there wasn't quite of a concern on the ADOS systems. So we didn't go down that path. We didn't train it. We didn't teach it. We didn't use it. And then there was people out there. And I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I was one of them that I took it as the niche. So there was people like myself that became diagnostic technicians that went into it with scan tools, that went into it with a different mindset seeing that, hey, these things need to happen. And actually, now that I say that, I genuinely believe one of the things that changed too was the, the whole idea of plug and play. So you could, you would have these modules, these computers in the cars, if you will, when you need to replace them, right? You, a headlight, you replace a headlight, it's broken. You take it out, you put a new headlight in, it works. That's the kind of the plug and play mentality. And ADOS has been around a while. No, adaptive headlights, again, looking at the term ADOS, it's such a broad term that we got to look at it and what it entails. So advanced, it's, you know, advanced driver assisted systems. That's anything that the car is helping you do. And they've been around. Adaptive headlights, when you turn the corner, they move with you, things like that. You plug them in and the, well, you used to plug in a headlight and it just turned on. Now, uh, you know, 
little indicators in your face, little halo lights don't work, the, 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 the lights don't move, stuff like that, because they need to be programmed, they need to be initialized, they need to be calibrated. And little by little, we started seeing that more and more and more, where that became, now, now it is the necessity, right? So it's understanding the functionality of all the pieces. So as I understand you're saying, there was no concern on the consumer side, so that didn't transfer to collision repairers. Correct. Okay, interesting. And, 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 and again, it, I, and the, using the word concern, I, I don't think there was an awareness, I think mm. is probably the better, better way to look at it, because obviously I bought, you know, or you bought anyone, they bought a car for their significant other, right? I'm driving the older car. My partner's driving, my, my, my spouse, my, 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 my son, my daughter, whoever, they're driving the newer car and they get into the accident. I take it to the body shop and I only know what I know. So I, I don't even have an awareness because I, did, I didn't even drive the car. I'm just making sure it gets back on time. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out who's going to pick up and drop off my kids. I'm like, my concerns are around the everyday process of not having the car, not necessarily having the car back. Right. And, you know, it, it, if, if Body Shop Business Magazine is, is any indication, it, it feels like most shops should know at this point that they need to scan and calibrate these vehicles, uh, obviously per the OEM repair recommendations. Um, however, you know, you hear that, yeah, shops are doing calibrations, but they're doing them wrong. What is your take on our shops scanning and calibrating every vehicle that comes in the door? Should they be? And if they're doing it, are they doing it correctly? And and I'm not I'm not here to 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 bash anybody, right? It, it really is a lack of knowledge. So we are we are in a we're in a social media kind of world where information is delivered in, in, in seconds. So I tell everyone I I I, I make um, I make a bomb ass quiche because I went on YouTube and I was like, oh, that's all it is. All right, cool, right? And now I'm like now I'm the I'm a chef of quiches. We see that with the repairs on these vehicles now too. So they're they're taking these tools, they're taking a little bit of knowledge and they're applying to what they know. They know enough to be dangerous now. And that's one of the things that, you know, we look at is what is the process, what are the procedures and how to outline everything. And there's more to it. So when the tool pops up, you know, do this step and, um, you know, push this button and do this. And again, the light on the dash goes out. They're like, well, it's, it's done. I'm, I'm finished. And they move on, not understanding that there's an entire procedure set up. Those are those requirements. There's a reason why, you know, the manufacturer wanted it a certain way. The car doesn't, the car works in a synergy amongst modules. So steering angle sensors, ABS pressure switch sensors, uh, all tie into, you know, millimeter wave radars and cameras. And they may not, they may not necessarily be one system, but there's, it's still in one vehicle. Yeah. It, it, and I think you're referring to the dash light myth, right? There's a lot of shops that still feel if, if there's no light, it's right. How are we ever going to break that mentality? Because because it is a myth that's really uh, feels like it's it's prevalent out in the industry. I, I know I've been fighting the, the the dash light myth for for many years, right? It's it is an interesting way to, to look at the vehicle, right? So you have one person saying, oh, as long as there's no lights on the dash, it's okay. And then you have another person saying, you know, it's not. And again, the consumer doesn't know any different. So at the end of the day, I believe there's an awareness on the consumer side that needs to happen. They need to understand what are what is happening to their vehicles and what does that look like? The, 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 the other problem, excuse me, the other problem I see is the amount of information the cars do give you. So today we have vehicles with infotainment centers 
that tell you what song's playing, right? They, they, you push a button, your seat goes into a certain position. Uh, some cars, you can play video games on the dashboard, right? So they're like, man, if, if the car had something wrong, it would tell me. The other thing that's happening, though, is we are telling the car through bad calibrations what the new zero point is. So if I lined out a car and I said, hey, this, this is zero, not this, then the car doesn't have a reason to tell me anything's wrong because a technician or, or I don't, I use the, again, not like giving credit to technicians, the individual that did not follow all the procedures told the car, this is true. So the car's not going to give you a dash light. The car's not going to indicate nothing. It doesn't know any different. That's where you hear the horror stories of a car driving under an underpass and the car goes to slow down because it's looking at an angle up and it sees the overpass, not the car in front of it. As it stands today, there, there are three ways that a body shop can address uh, this technology in vehicles and do the scanning calibration, right? There's, they can sublet it out. Uh, to a dealer, they can do it in-house, or they can bring in a remote diagnostic service. Um, what, in your opinion, is the best way, or is there just not a one-size-fits-all for all shops? <laughs> That's a good question, Jay. There is definitely not a one-size-fits-all. And that, that works even in, in pro-tech. From our technicians, there's not a one-size-fits-all, right? So there is levels of... There's levels of, of what's the word? Levels of skill set. So there's levels of skill set that are absolutely needed. As we go through this, it makes it sounds real easy. Pre-scan, post-scan, health check, dynamic, static. Like we have names for these things that we do today. So it's easy for the industry to be like, oh yeah, we pre-scan every car. Who's reading those codes? We use the terms drive cycle very loosely. Test drive, we use that term very loosely. Like, like the verbiage we use is, is so broad that it's easy to fit any one of those three things you just said into anyone's category to, to, to describe their, their perspective and deliver their, their narrative. There is no one size fits all. There's no, there's no special tool that does everything there's a lot of really good tools. I, in the background, you see we test a lot of tools. Tools are wonderful. They, they help us. Uh, we, we can, from lasers to strings, from plumb bobs to whatever, we, 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 we have it all. Going back to that skill set, that's where the one size, there is no one size fits all. Because the minute something doesn't calibrate, the minute the light doesn't turn off, then does that body shop really have all that skill set, all the all the experience and all the tools needed beyond that target that got hung up at 3,000 millimeters away kind of deal? Right, and you know, you mentioned equipment and it got me thinking, you know, we've heard, and I've heard the same thing, there's not one tool that's gonna do it all. Uh, but there are, there are shops that are over equipping for this evolution and they are under equipping is there, uh, and unfortunately, I think they need a lot of different types of equipment and tools. And like, like we said, there's not one tool. But in your opinion, uh, how do you find that middle ground of not over-equipping, not under-equipping, but having just the right equipment that you need, whether, whether it is a, a bunch of different brands and different kinds, is there a happy medium? I want to say there is, actually. So I, I definitely have... Uh, friends outside of ProTech that own their own shops. They do their own things. Uh, I'm in different committees that I know there's different centers out there that are doing a wonderful job at keeping ADOS internal, right? They're doing their own calibrations. They have their own skill set. They have their own they have their own techs, mechanics, whatever person with that skill set is that they have in their shop. It's knowing what your shop's capable of. And it's not just, there's so many elements to it, right? Like, if you're up north and you're like, well, we do all dynamic calibrations, well, understand that you, you may not be able to do it in the middle of a snowstorm, right, kind of deal, right? Do you have the right flooring? Do you have the right lighting? Do you have the right equipment? Do you have the right skill sets when things go outside the norm? I, I, I had a, one of my friends 
uh, called me up and he has a couple of tools and he says, Hey, um, Hey man, I got this Volkswagen that just came in and, um, it has, it has, it's, he goes, it's kind of weird. He goes, it has two radars on it. And I was like, well, I'm telling you right now, the fact you don't know what it is and the fact that you're going down a LIDAR system, don't even, you don't have the equipment. You don't have the experience, like the, the, the requirements for that car just superseded your, your skill set level. So is he going to go run out and buy every tool that's going to be needed to do that? If his car park doesn't, if he's not a Volkswagen person, that may not be where he wants to invest right now. Right. But if you're in Denver, yeah, you might want a Subaru tool, right? Interesting. Yeah. And um, it, it feels like, you know, you just said, you know, a shop realizes it's not equipped or knowledgeable to, to do the repair, yet sometimes they do. Uh, and this goes back to when aluminum came out, you know, shops that were not equipped or knowledgeable about the F-150 maybe just went ahead and did their best. And obviously that's a dangerous situation, but so I see a, I see an, an, a, a, a similarity there, whether it was metal or electronics, you know, you know and, and maybe it brings up the question, does a shop really need to give up that repair uh, li for, the, for liability sake, if it's not knowledgeable and equipped to do it. In the sense of the aluminum repair, absolutely. Right. So in your example, I, 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 again, been around, I've been around centers that are, you know, F-150 aluminum certified or, or excuse me, better yet, they're Audi aluminum certified, but they're not F-150 aluminum certified. There's, there's a different certification just in the aluminums alone. Right. So or, or in the repairs of that of that metal anyway. So they it makes absolute sense to put yourself in a liability piece for for a calibration is kind of crazy to me to begin with. Right. Like I'm just why why would you want that liability anyway? But going back to the other question you have is the the sublet. There's a, there's a lot of good companies out there. There's this one company, Protec. They're amazing, right? So right, so right. But there's there's no reason you couldn't do the repair on a on a Honda, on a Toyota, on a Nissan, and know that the sublet vendor that is versed, that does have the experience, that does know what's needed to do the calibration, come in and do it. Why would you pass up on the whole job when you have resources? I I mean, again, I wouldn't. So the, that like, I think that's the difference is that's actually the difference is the resources that are at your at your at your um, fingertips there at the shop and how you utilize them. Yeah, it feels like, um, too, there, there's some um, uh, debate as to whether every vehicle that comes in a shop today should get a scan and or calibration. Uh, you know, obviously, the insurers are saying, ah, no, you don't need to do that. Why we listen to them, who knows? They're not the repair expert, right? We're the repair expert. Uh, but, you know, uh, obviously it comes down to uh, researching the OEM repair procedures, which not everybody's doing, unfortunately. But um, as I understand it, a lot of automakers are saying, hey, even if it's a cosmetic damage, we, we want you to scan and calibrate the vehicle, depending. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but what is your take on this misinformation about uh, well, this vehicle needs one, this one doesn't, you know, you know, uh, clearly they need to be researching the procedures, right? So I'm, I'm a firm believer that pre-scan is absolute, right? The, the electronic blueprinting of a vehicle needs to happen. Um, when I originally started the, 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 when I started the scanning with the centers doing it, so the, uh, the caliber collisions, they all have scan tools. They all do pre and post scans. When I started that training with them, it was interesting. It was very eye opening to see the differences. There was uh, C1 has their H notes, uh, uh, the motor guides, the um, the P pages in, in Mitchell, right? They, they had their lists and they were like, you know, if you have uh, an airbag deployment, replace these parts. You'd go to ICAR's RTS site and they have their little things and you go through it and they're like, hey, if if you have an airbag deployment, replace these parts. Ironically enough, both of, both systems, both things I just mentioned, all of them mentioned, 
if you scan the vehicle, you'll get certain DTCs that tell you when to replace those parts. So something as simple as, and I guess it's not simple, but something is, is, is part of the repair process of when to replace modules. We're replacing modules in cars that don't need them because we didn't scan the car to begin with. If we would have looked at the DTCs, if we would have looked at the pre-scan, we would understand the, the processes from the beginning. We have something as simple as replacing a windshield and we go to replace the new glass and the car doesn't calibrate. Customer says, hey, nothing was wrong with my car before. If we would have done the pre-scan before, we would have seen that the camera was, was in op at the time before we even touched it. So to understand where the vehicle's at before we even touch it is absolutely important. And the vehicle absolutely is trying to tell you something through those DTCs. So if you're a consumer today and you've seen the commercials on TV uh, of the cars uh, breaking automatically when a dog runs out in the middle of the street or whatever, um, the young happy couple driving the car and their car saves them, and so they're understanding these systems now. Uh, and then they get in a collision. And they want to pick a shop that's going to restore those safety systems properly. What, what should they look for these days? I mean, what, 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 is, there a, is there a certification? Is there, a, is there a, a, a training certificate that they should ask for the, to see? How does a consumer know what shop is, is able to best restore their advanced driver assistance systems properly? Again, that's that's a really good question, and and I can, uh, man, I'm gonna have to think this one through in pieces, right? So, I'm um, on one side saying awareness is absolutely important, and on the other side, there there's definitely a concern, right? So, it's going to be homework. It's genuinely going to be homework. The new iPhone comes out, and someone runs out, and they go on Google, and they search everything about it. They want to new, the, see the new camera and the new specifications and, like, the new memories. They get into a car accident. They talk to somebody on the phone that they've never met. They just assume the person on the phone has their best interest in mind. And what they do is they tell them, oh, well, you can take it to this center. They don't really ask questions. They're just like, okay, cool. You know, I just want to get the car fixed. Send it. They go there and now they're now they are asking, hey, my car stopped, you know, when the when when my dog got in front of it, right? Like I, I heard in you know 2018, all cameras are are you know necessarily in the rear. And people are like, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, we, we don't worry about that. You know, we're we're iCar certified, we have ASC technicians, you know, we've been doing this for years, we got this. And that's where I have my my little concerns, right? Because just because I'm ASC certified in, in transmissions doesn't mean I'm going to be doing ADOS or just because I'm platinum certified in estimatics doesn't mean I'm going to be doing your ADOS calibrations properly. But it's really, really easy for the industry to sell this, this ideology when you're, you're not wrong, right? So until there is some governing force to, to be like, hey, are you certified to do this? Then it is, it's really going to be doing your homework. If I went to a center and I see, I see a big BMW plaque certified and I'm like, hey, so what do you guys use on your BMW? And they're like, oh, what are you talking about? Like we, we have a, we have a, um, a part store code reader that we have and it, it does just fine it doesn't matter that that's not necessarily true at all when it comes to my vehicle and and i wouldn't again if i don't do any homework i wouldn't know any different that you know bmw has its own software it has its own procedures and it has its own things to do what it needs to do very differently than a nissan maxima let me ask you this chris if you're a shop out there and you are very unprepared for what's happening today in today's vehicles. Uh, you, don't even, you don't have a scan tool, you don't have any targets, uh, and you've gotten away with it so far somehow. 
What do you need to do tomorrow to get up to speed uh, with this new technology and be prepared and knowledgeable and trained to restore these safety systems? What do they need to do tomorrow? In my, in my, probably my biased answer would be, would be find an expert, right? Like if you're, if you're a body shop or, or any repair facility at this point, right? Like, like and any repair facility, it doesn't make a difference if you do oil changes and brakes or, or, or bend metal and paint it, right? Like if you're not bringing on an expert to your team between EVs, ADOS, autonomous cars, over the line programming, multi-line network systems, like, like no one thinks twice about it when they go in and their phone, like you're more mad your phone didn't connect to your car at the time than even understanding the technologies in your car, right? So same thing goes for the shops is that they're very, if they're not realizing where they're at and they're just clicking buttons on their estimates so they can get their 0.5 so they can do whatever they're doing, but they don't really even understand it. The first thing they need to do is get some some expert consultation, understand where they're at. Someone's going to, someone, and I can tell you, that's one of the things that I think we've prided ourselves in is working with, with, with our partners across the board is trying to become the SHME, if you will, right? The subject matter expert within that field and explain to someone like, do, do I really need to fill up the, 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 the car with gas? Is it really that important? And I'm like, well, let, let me, let me show you why. Let me show you why. You know, we, we have a we have this long ruler on the wall right there where I can show you where one degree takes you off. Right. Where the whole one degree thing that, that everyone talks about, because it's easy to understand. That it takes little tweaks again to make that zero point say it's not here, it's right here. So, Chris, it, it, it's fair to say that shops have come a long way uh, in their knowledge um, of these <clears throat> systems. Uh, but one of the frustrating aspects is things are changing so fast and so often, as you know, right? I mean, there are almost sometimes daily, weekly uh, changes uh, from the OEs uh, as far as their repair procedures and whatnot uh, or the technology in a vehicle. Um, so, so once it seems like a, you have a handle on things, all of a sudden you, you don't. So uh, how do you, uh, in your opinion, how do you address that? Uh, lightning fast dynamic going on, whether it's technology or the procedures or a new model comes out and things, everything's changed. How do you address that as a shop? Be nimble. Be nimble, Jay. I'm telling you, Jay. You're not, you're, you're one of the things that blindsides even like, again, ProTech being being one of the, I want to consider one of the experts in the industry, we get blindsided, right? It, it, um, there's an update that came out on, on one of these electric vehicles that we now are locked out of pitch verifications. Well, what do you do, right? How do you handle it? How do you update it? What do you, like, yesterday I was able to do it, and because of an update, now I can't. Um, seeing everything from from two-step verifications, right? The security gateway modules, seeing the CAN differences, seeing uh, everyone have this idea that, uh, oh, I bought a tool and it does remote diagnostics, right? I, I went to one of these companies and they're gonna log right into my, my, my system from you know another part of the country. And now today my internet's down, right? Now, now there's you know a, a storm somewhere, so they have bad internet, right? So now I'm down. I can't, I, I don't know what to do next. I, the service information, the scans, the whatever, like it really is, there was, I, I remember this, I don't know if I'm aging myself, right? But there was, there was a time where, you know, when, when, the, when the cash register, when the, when the credit card reader went down, they'd pull out that, right away they'd run and go pull out that thing that you slide the old credit card on and have a carbon copy and they just knew what to do. Now, when the computers go down, you watch, Everyone's standing in line and like, oh, man, like you're stuck, right? So it is being nimble. It's having the right tools. It's having the right understanding and going and it circles all the way back to that. There is no one size fits all. 
uh, I can tell you um, GM made an update on their on their website. It had nothing to do with their software. They changed their website overnight, and now we couldn't get the update to the software until they fixed that, right? So what do you do at that point? How do you, how do you leverage your tools? How do you leverage your experience, and how do you leverage your knowledge? That, that's really the key to this. I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier about skill set. You know, it's not just about reading codes. It's understanding what that code means and electronic troubleshooting, wire chasing, I've heard it called. Um, one of the dilemmas I think we've heard is, you know, body men used to, you know, bend metal. And now they have to uh, address electronics um, and be Bill Gates. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons the industry is, is not real comfortable with this. And they've had to perhaps look to the outside for someone with skills in this arena. Uh, it's not as very easy to train someone who's used to uh, fixing dents to fix electronics, right? Um, so is, is, what is your assessment there as far as where the industry's at? You know, is it possible to teach a 30-year body tech electronics? Uh, or do you need to seek out someone younger or even someone that's not even remotely ever been in the collision industry that may have an interest in the collision industry? Uh, or obvious, or uh, I, shameless plug for yourself, <laughs> go to you guys who have the expertise. But there is that discomfort with this, with this stuff, right? Oh, no, absolutely. And, and every, everything you said, retrain, new, um, bring them to light, whatever, like all, again, being agile, every one of those points are absolutely legitimate. So bringing that mindset to, to light is important. If you didn't know that a ground point unplugged on that Toyota is going to completely melt the harness from the front to the back, moving it from the, from, from the bay to the booth, after about the second one, you start catching on real quick, right? You're like, well, hold on. Every time we move these cars, they, they're, they're, they're melting on me. What's happening? You know, if, if you, and you know, and that goes for the body man, for the painter, right? When, when you go to turn your key on and the windshield wipers are moving, everything's happening. You're like, well, I don't get what, what just happened because the painter painted over a ground point, right? It doesn't matter if you've been in the industry five minutes or five thousand years. You need to have this knowledge set that this is that there's these things that are happening. So it is, it is like every point that you mentioned. Everybody needs to know. You can't get around the electronics of these vehicles. There, there there's, it just doesn't work that way anymore. Right, and, and the liability is is increasing. Right, I mean, there's always been liability in this industry. Um, we are uh, uh, fixing vehicles that end up traveling down highways at 75 miles an hour with some precious cargo inside. Uh, and we've got to do our job right. But now these advanced driver assistance systems, which are essentially safety systems for the vehicle, um, are, it's only increasing the liability, right? So in, in your opinion, what needs to happen? How do we impress upon shops that, hey, this is serious stuff and the liability in this business is only going to increase and there's going to be trouble if we don't get our hands around this. And uh, again, as, as you were asking the question, I think of the core values that, that ProTech has and, you know, those core values are doing the right thing, right? You know, be trustworthy, uh, pretty much be aware and, 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 and be courageous, right? So one of the things that, that we really want to do is be courageous as an industry. We're, we're afraid to ask. We're, we're almost pigeonholed, if you will, in an ideology. This is, there wasn't, going back to the dash light, there was no light on the dash. We never had to do that before. Well, you know, uh, the insurance company is going to say no. What, what, whatever, whatever reason it's always easy, right? The path of least resistance, right? I, I have Ford mats that will literally take up this entire room. There's an investment of tools, time, energy, money, like like people, because you're you're 
if you aren't aware as an estimator today that if you see a car seat in the back of a car after an accident that that is not right then there's there you already you're already kind of behind the power curve quite a bit if you don't know how you know if you don't understand how to read your your p page and h notes for an airbag deployment how are you ever going to get to the point of advanced safety systems that are using the world around it to make decisions? So I, I, I genuinely believe in the trolley paradox. And I could tell you the manufacturers, the engineers behind them, there's some very smart people that put these cars together. And they made the decision of what that vehicle is going to do. Why would you do anything? to take that decision onto yourself. That's what I don't get. Follow the procedures. Well, Chris, thank you for being on the very first episode of Under the Radar. I really appreciate your time. Jason, I, I appreciate you inviting me. I, I, I'm, I'm actually honored that I'm on the first. Uh, for the, those that are gonna follow behind me, uh, all, you know, the, the uh, bring the knowledge you know, like, let's, let's make sure the industry is, is being informed. I, I genuinely appreciate this opportunity and you know, thank you. And, and everyone from here at ProTech and everybody here, like, thank you. You're welcome, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for watching this episode of Under the Radar. For more episodes, visit BodyShopBusiness.com.